Hey, what is up you guys? It is Iron Reversal and welcome back to another episode of Boomich. And today, yet again, another time for another Task Force Operation. Yesterday we did Upper Lip, that went pretty well to give you guys a little rundown here. We managed to take out three bases and with like three seconds on the clock, it is about time that we're going to be refreshing everything. So let me collect my resources here. And a little boat is coming to the shore once again, so we're just going to wait for that. Um, I actually have been reading in the comments that you guys don't really mind if you guys see the whole, whole like um, the whole like replay of the attacks that we did uh, throughout the task force because sometimes I tend to skip over those that I feel aren't really that significant or interesting to watch. So that is the the whole reason. Uh, wine skipping over that so if you guys uh, uh, Just let me know give me some feedback about it because I'm really curious about stuff like that anyway It is almost there just a couple of seconds more and then we finally are going to be getting our rewards for operation upper lip and uh, Today we're going to be getting uh, gold a lot of more gold than yesterday, which is really nice so that's going to be added. My Zookas are going to be done in 20 hours and 4 minutes. And today, later today, uh, I'm going to be releasing another video for Boom Beach. And if you haven't seen Operation Upper Lip, make sure you guys go ahead and check it out. So it's about time once again. It's time that we are going to be doing another one of these operations. And once again, I'm going to step it up another notch. So ladies and gentlemen, today I present you Operation Mambo or Mambo. Like, I don't know if you guys know the song, like, Mambo number 5. Comes with 4 power cores, level uh, 78, 84, 89, and 94. This is going to be uh, pretty difficult. Let's start off with Tonnage. I'm going to watch how this one looks. Um, I like the lineup of this. This is really challenging. Someone's attacking already, but uh, let's go over the lineup here. Uh, we got a lot of power cells here in the front. I would attack on the left side to take out these uh, rocket launchers. You can also go from the back over here, but then you got to be dealing with these two rocket launchers. I feel that's, that kind of is the easy route to go to, so I might instruct my people uh, with that. Um, then you can go over here and then go to the uh, go to the power core. Uh, you got like two shock launches over here and you got two rocket launchers over there to take into consideration. So those are quite hard. Let's move on to the next one. Turning down the sound a little bit. Um, next one is Power Core Residue. I'm going to see how this one looks as well. Wow, very straight. And this one looks actually pretty easy. I'm not going to lie about that. This one looks really easy. But uh, do not be mistaken. Uh, do not be uh, mis misled because it's 135% building health. And it comes uh, at a, a total of almost 400,000 health on the power core. You got a shock launch over here, which is high level. Uh, you got two boom cannons in the front there. But uh, in general, I just kind of feel it, it is kind of easy to take this one on. But then again, rocket launchers can be kind of tricky to deal with. So you probably want to be going from either the left or the right side. And uh, seeing how this base is, uh, is being set up, I suppose go from the right side. because Or left side, actually, to... Uh, yeah, to uh, you don't really have to worry that much about that shock launch over here. So yeah. Next one is Excel, level 89 base. Um, someone actually mentioned that the bases keep on changing. Uh, I don't have any confirmation about that because I have never done the same base twice. So if you guys actually notice that these bases aren't the same always, like they always change uh, depending on like, uh, like let's say, let me put it this way. If you're doing, for example, Mambo. Are the bases always the same, like the layouts, or do the layouts change? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm pretty curious about knowing that. For this base, Excel, I would go from the right side. And the reason for that is obviously you got six rocket launches over here, which are going to be really tricky. And I feel in some sort of a way you can make a passageway towards here, which would be the most um, easy way to go to. Um... A lot of power cells over in this uh, in this base in general, but uh, it's a nice little base. I like this one quite a bit. And then the last one, that's going to be the hardest one. Atlas level 94. And wow. <laughs> it's like you got two wings of uh, power cells at both sides. And for this one, once again, it doesn't seem that hard. But don't be deceived. It might be really hard. Um, for this one, I would definitely go for the rocket launches over there. And uh, go for the shock launches as well. 
if you go for the rocket launchers, just keep the shock launchers uh, shocked. And then I, th I think you're in for a good attack. And as a matter of fact, I'm running with the warriors today. So I'm just going to go ahead and attack Atlas over here. Because I feel we can actually go ahead and take this one down. I'm going to be focusing all of my attacks on the, uh, on the rocket launchers. So that way we can actually wipe those out. And let's see what do we have over here. Almost 200%. That is really devastating. But let's just give this one a go. Okay. How are we going to be doing this? Well, first of all, I probably want to be dropping like one or two smokes. Um, I want to be dropping the flare, obviously. Now, <laughs> I need to... Uh, this is like warrior tactics. Okay, there we go. Going to be dropping everything down there. One smoke. I think that's good. I have no idea. I got shocked. That is quite a shocker. Pun intended. Pun fully intended. Let's just smoke just one more, once more just in case. So that way the uh, they're all healed up. And then shock bombing you. It's a little bit too early. My timing is just really terrible right now. Uh, wow, we are going to be getting wiped out. And I am not going to be doing a lot of damage on these, on these shock launchers. Uh, but yeah, that was a terrible attack from me. Uh, yeah, I haven't been using the warriors in a while. And I got kind of caught off guard by the uh, by the size of this base. So yeah, I couldn't do a whole lot there. But that's going to be the main focus. Um, as always, we're just going to uh, skip forward like a couple of hours. And then go show you guys a couple of replays. So I'll see you guys then. Okay, and we're back. And right now, as you guys can see, 17 hours left on the clock. So we've been running this for a good 7 hours now. And as you guys can see, we only took down two of the bases. We took down Tonnage, level 78, and Atlas, level 94, which is a, a nice base to take down. And right now, I'm actually going to show you guys the replays that are relevant towards, like, taking down the base. Or just stuff that I wanted to be talking to you guys about in, uh, in particular. So let's start off with Tonnage over here, level 78 base. The first attack by Sir to give you guys a little refresh about what the base looks like. It looks pretty much like this. Now, the way we can attack this one is by going to the left side where Sir is attacking right now. But also the right side with the uh, sniper tower and the uh, flamethrower and the cannons over here. Because you see at the right side you don't really have to deal with these boom cannons over here. And also these boom cannons are not going to be an issue. However... If you are near the base, like right around here, you're going to have to deal with these two shock launchers and these two, three uh, rocket launchers. So that is an issue on itself. So it's like a 50-50 situation in which you just have to decide what is going to be better. As you guys can see, right now we started an attack at the left side and Sir actually did a nice job on this attack. Let's go on to the next one. The next attack is actually uh, entirely different. I'm going to show you guys my attack a little bit later. But uh, Finn also attacked Tonnage. And he actually got 5 power points. So as you guys can see, we already have like some of the power cells done and all of that good stuff. And as you guys can see right now, Finn is flaring. Going to do double speed. He's flaring to the back. He goes by the right side. That's pretty obvious right now. He right now goes for the power cell. Takes it out. Flamethrower and Sniper Tower up next. Takes out the Snipe, takes out the Flamethrower. Heads towards the cannons. And then from here, we're just going to see how this one goes. The uh, Rocket Launch starts firing. First cannon gets taken out. And there you go. Second cannon. Yeah, boom. It also gets taken out. Like, last second. So this was a nice little attack over here. Kind of made the road a little bit more free for the right side. And then the next attack comes. And I'm going to show you guys what happens here. At this moment, you gotta realize, like, I'm just gonna show you guys the replay real quickly. We are kind of, like, debating how we should approach this attack. And I was like, what if there was someone out there who could actually reach the rocket launchers? So that's going to be the next attack. The next attack is going to be from Matt. And uh, he was like, I got level 17 warriors so let's go ahead and actually see how well he's going to be doing level 17 is almost maxed out that is just absolutely ridiculous and uh he's gonna go from the left side i just told him like can you do it and he was like i can so let's just see how he does it he's like a, a, a pretty much professional when it comes down to using the uh the warriors as you guys can see perfect smoke and uh the second smoke as well Perfect smoke, a uh, little bit of an error there, but that is okay. He covers it with a smoke, still has enough gunboat energy to go towards this machine gun. He's almost there, will he make it? 
Let's actually find out. Drops the flare, drops the smoke right away. His timing is really nice. That's something I would really like recommend you to take a part on because the gunboat is actually really far away. It takes like three or four seconds for everything to arrive. And his smokes are ridiculously long. Look at that. This is like 10, 12 seconds. Boom. First one gone. Look what happens next. Next one. Gonna be gone. Machine gun. Gone. Gone. Goes for this, power cell gone, flamethrower, also bites the dust, next flamethrower, next machine gun. And this attack is just really crazy and that is all because his warriors are ridiculously powerful. Um, first rocket launcher, down. Second one rocket launcher, does it go down? Uh, unfortunately the flamethrower doesn't go down, this is like a tricky situation, we do not know, it seems like he has 5 uh, warriors left. So you guys can see the flamethrower only has 3 of them, so there's 2 of them being safe and nothing to attack them. Drops the artillery shell, boom, takes it out, 3 warriors left, just gets right away. But this attack was very essential for us to actually like go to the power core, we saw a weakness in here. And that is where the next attack obviously is going to be taking out the entire base. And I'm going to show you guys this attack. We had uh, another attack in the air that didn't really work out. Uh, so yeah, that's nothing really to show. But as you guys can see, Dracorian was actually the one defeating this base. So let's speed this up a little bit here. Takes out the, the, the cannon. Flare to the left. Then, obstacle. First obstacle. Cannon over here. Boom cannons over here, first one gets taken out, second one gets taken out, and then it's just a matter of taking out the base, because obviously nothing's going to be reaching the Zookas, and it's just free path for Dracorin, great attack right there, got 82 victory points. Next attack, so I'm going to show you guys how this base looked like. So you guys can see, obvious what you need to be attacking is in the front here. All of these buildings need to go. Machine guns, shock launchers, up to sniper towers. Other side as well, machine guns, shock launchers, boom cannon. That boom cannon is kind of a pass because it's right in between two of these flamethrowers. And as you guys can see, I didn't really do it all that well. Let's just re-watch that one because I was showing you guys the, uh, the base. So I'm actually going to watch the battle in twice the speed right now. I dropped the flare like a clunts. And I have no idea what I was doing. But because of this I got like damaged so badly. Now I actually uh, make a mistake here. I was shocking the wrong side. I should have shocked over here. But it doesn't matter. I took it down halfway. The first rocket launcher. Let's go to the next one. The next attack. After Atlas was this. Uh, after. After. Tonnage was destroyed, was from Jaffs. This attack was pretty nice as well. I'm just going to show it off to you guys. Um, basically what he does is uh, he goes over at the same side. But he doesn't take out the rocket launcher that I took out. He takes out the other rocket launcher. So that's nice on itself as well. Then, next attack. After Jaffs, we got Stevo. Again, uses the warriors. Because warriors are just so efficient here. Or at least we thought they were really that efficient. And there you go, smoke, boom, takes out the first rocket launcher, damages very heavily the second rocket launcher. Just one, you know, one one thing gets taken down every single attack. And then after this, Stevo, we have Major, one force point gained, you can already guess what happened there. Tushar, gets a lot of power cells, not that interesting. Q-Dobra, Q-Dobra is level 41 with level 10 warriors, also a pretty strong guy, 42 warriors deployed, only one force point gained. Muhammad, at this point I'm just going to show you guys what we actually destroyed. We actually destroyed one shock launcher and all of the rocket launchers. So, so far that's going good. However, I think Muhammad was having a nice attack, no actually not. Disco Cat doesn't destroy anything, Macwallo, one building once again. Commander Mamo, nothing at all. Tyne, one force points again. You know, we were just taking out one thing at a time in this base. That really shows how difficult this base is for us. In this case, what he takes out is the machine gun. The other machine guns are all taken out. But we still got like the shock launchers, the sniper towers, this rocket launcher and this boom cannon to worry about. So, so far it's not really going out as well. But slowly, and uh, slowly but certainly we actually get there. Jaxi takes out one something on Resident you. Turtle Sky. Now this is going to be an interesting attack. He actually got three force points. Let's see what he takes out. 
So, he drops the flare, and I want you to pay attention to this. He drops the flare in an area that is not connected towards a building. So, he's basically um, flaring towards a position where there are no buildings. And this is like probably the best move he could have done. Takes out the uh, takes out the uh, the shock launcher, which is just really great. And then after that, he also manages to take out like a sniper tower, two of them actually. And look at that. That's like really good position here because someone can just drop an artillery shell and take care of that machine gun. So really, really nice attack from Turtle Sky. Uh, pretty well done there. Let's actually go ahead and go to Janice over here. He's using the uh, the heavies. And he zookas. He drops a barrage down there. He actually upgraded to another uh, landing craft, which is pretty nice. Congratulations on that, by the way, if you're watching. I know you're watching this, so that's pretty cool. And uh, let's see, he takes out the machine gun. Then he's gonna be going for the uh, for the sniper tower. Takes out the sniper tower and drops a pretty smart flare down here because, uh, well, I'm just gonna watch this. He uses the same tactic that I always like to use, and that is the power of distance. As you guys can see, Boom Cannon takes out those two Zookas, takes out that Boom uh, Zooka, takes out this one. But I don't think it has the reach to take out these, so that means, like, it's just... We will just have to wait for, like, two minutes before something is going to happen down there. Obviously, we're not going to be waiting for that. We're going to be uh, skipping to the last attack by, uh, actually, Atlas. Let's see what he did. I have no idea what he did in this one. Fast forward here. Goes for the boom cannon. Interesting tactic here. Probably the smartest way to go. Um, at this moment, there's no need. Uh, and that's the, the other tip I want to give you guys. There's no need to uh, sacrifice warriors uh, to actually go for this. Because you can just use a bunch of Zookas. Place them near. Go straight for the power core and be done with it. And that is what Rudolf is actually doing. So he got the win here. The other like the other guys actually went with uh, actually went with the uh, with the warriors. So uh, Rudolf actually understands the message. Flare down there. Just gonna go shock bomb the boom cannon just in case. Um, nothing really is happening. There you go. The base is done. So overall, we had a nice day. Um, I think we can learn a lot out of this. I mean, task force operation is always like a, a, a thing for progression. It's not always like you learn everything in one go. From sessions like these and revising them and reviewing everything, uh, you learn a lot of them. And I'm actually going to tell my task force members to watch this video so that way they get an understanding about that as well. As I really want to be uh, trying to uh, strive to improve. So if you guys by any chance like are interested to join in the task force, we uh, every single day almost we got like space because some people don't manage to get three intel on a daily basis and those people get kicked out but if you're like interested in joining in just write down an application why we should invite you in the comment section down below and i'm going to be contacting you whenever we got a space available so that should be interesting and that being said though i'm going to be rounding things off here because well we're still in the progression of taking down this power you know it, this operation i've no idea how it's going to be going but for now residue um, something tells me we're going to be getting a lot of power cells, yeah. Um, I think the team has kind of given up. Maybe uh, someone's gonna be, uh, ruffle something over the rest. But yeah, so far, uh, there's no side of actually taking down the, this, this, this operation entirely. So, I think we're just going to, uh, take a few steps back tomorrow. Go to somewhat of an easier task force to actually show it off to you guys as well. So, make sure you guys stay tuned for that. For now, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, make sure that if you guys like this video, to boom, give it a thumbs up. And this has been Reversal for Boom Beach. I'm going to be signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey you guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Boom Beach. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, subscribe to the channel because tomorrow there will be another Task Force operation. That being said though, I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you enjoyed this and you want to see more, there's two videos at the top of the screen that are little previews. You can find the links to those in the video description. Um, the video at the left side is my Boom Beach podcast alongside with Bootramp. Make sure you guys go ahead and check that one out. And at the right side is going to be the yesterday's task force operation called Powder Cag. That being said, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.